Yeah. <laughs> um, so, there's the essay about creation myths, which is about basically, it's an address to our consideration that he, what, he say, what he's basically saying in the creation myth essay is that what we consider primitive religion or mythology is really the root of true religion if you understand the purpose of those myths. But in effect, in that, that essay, he's also pointing out the fact that we have lost touch with that. We no longer live in a culture in which mythology is a living cultural instrument or a force of awakening or realization. It doesn't, we live, we don't live in a perceptual culture in which mythology awakens a perceptual sense of participation. We live in a culture which is verbal, verbal mental, left-brained. Therefore, we don't respond to mythology. We tend to doubt it. Um, and as he points out at the beginning of the Adler essay, this matter of doubt is the response, it's the typical, the classic cultural response when myth falls into doubt. And it's also, I was thinking about it as I, I was reading this today, it's not only, see, this matter of intellectualism and doubt is not just a phenomenon of the 20th century. See, if you, all the way through, there have, I mean, the whole matter of, the whole question of uh, materialism as a philosophy is very ancient. There have always been individuals who, to one degree or another, have fallen into doubt, have doubted the exoteric cults, and uh, unable to come up with a greater participatory sense or participation in existence, um, have, have also have been doubters and philosophers, <coughs> therefore. So the phenomenon of uh, philosophy or doubt or intellectualizing or attempting to prove God is also something which it also goes back uh, very far. There, I mean, I, I think there's a whole strain of Indian philosophy which is all about this kind of thing. Um, so, in effect, the essay is about Adler, who is an attempt, a, a classic example, or he brings together, he, his, as he says in the book, Adler himself says in the book, that his, his, uh, his purpose is to summarize the, ar the arguments for the existence of God. Um, but it also leads Levinand into the consideration of ignorance and, and the consideration of the contemplation of real questions, which in effect in a culture which is fundamentally left-brained and verbal-based is the alternative to mythology. If you lived in a right-brained perceptual culture, then, um, then myths have a way, is what he's saying, is a, is a way of pointing into people to a greater contemplation of, of reality. Mm -hmm. Right. Shamanism, all of that. Uh, Shamanism, in effect, what we see in shamanism is living myth. You sit there and they actually talk to the spirits and they actually animate them and all this kind of thing. So it's not just stories, it's something that actually everyone participates in and is, and is moved by and put re in touch, is put back in touch with a greater participation in reality. Okay, we don't live in that kind of a culture, fundamentally. We live in a culture which is verbal and left brained. Therefore, the contemplation of the consideration of great questions is in the context of our culture a way in which we can reconnect with that fundamental contemplation of existence itself. As he said, a das is someone whose hair, if he has any at all, stand on the, stands up on the back of his neck and his head at the consideration or the contemplation of the existence of anything at all. That is a basically left-brained activity, but a left-brained activity which inherently, if fully engaged, awakens the intuition of the divine condition, of, of an intuition of reality or existence itself. So, in a, so in, a, in a culture in which myth is no longer alive, this is a way in which that same impulse is, is kept alive. Is that the same idea behind quantum questions where science is pushing you through a left brain way? So okay. You get a mystical... All right. Okay, good. What is Quantum Questions about? The book itself. Okay, that's, that's the Adler essay. Then he goes on to Ken Wilber's book about Quantum Questions, which is, which well, is a book about what? Well, in some sense, he's exploding the myth that Dallas physics and whatnot, that science and mysticism are merging. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he's not chucking out either one. He's just saying mm -hmm. one's getting to be a... Well, he does it hierarchically, right? But one's getting to be a conventional description of mysticism mm -hmm. and science. And mysticism. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, the way Levananda explains it in his commentary is that 
Wilbur's book, Quantum Questions, is a critique of the modern trend to try and equate the idea that somehow mysticism and science are all talking about the same thing. Um, Right. Right. But he's all, yeah, there's no contradiction between the two. But what Wilbur is saying in his book is that, that uh, books like the Tao of Physics are, as he's saying, being reductionist. In other words, to say that science and mysticism are really saying the same thing is not really fully taking into account the purposes and endeavors of each. See, that they are, he's saying that it's, it's more complex than that. It's not that simplistic. And in a sense, see, Lavananda. It tends to agree in the sense that the, the endeavor of science is, yes, ultimately seems to be pointing at the same kinds of things, but the purpose of science is not to point at the same things that mysticism is pointing at. It's put, pointing at a different kind of participation in the world and in reality. So it's a good antidote to a kind of, um, well, a kind of a fluffy, a kind of superficial idea that somehow, oh, science is really just you know, coming to the same conclusions as mysticism is, that everything is energy and all of this, which doesn't fully, which doesn't fully take into account what science is about and therefore doesn't, doesn't, uh, science requires a far more discrimination in terms of understanding what science is about because as Lovananda says, science and scientific materialism is a, is a uh, profound and basically negative influence in the world. Um, in terms of its suppression, it, the, the whole trend of science is that which suppresses or discounts the, uh, the, the mystical presumptions, mystical points of view. Not true science. No, right, but not true science. It's scientism, as he calls it. Because science is simply the activity of investigation. As he's often said, the way of the heart in that sense is a science. But okay, why then? But what is the importance of his of this of talking about Wilbur? Why would Lovenanda write an essay about? Um, why would Lovenanda write an essay about a book by Ken Wilbur that happens to be about science, physics, and mysticism? Most people think that's the end. Well, because it's probably if you consider it in terms of the present day, it's probably one of the, it's probably the most significant right. alternative right. attempt right. to. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Do you remember how he addresses that fact in the essay? It, it may say a lot about what's true, it just doesn't, you don't have any participation in what's true. Right. Just, mm-hmm. In the sense that what he said, a great deal of Wilbur's book is the writings, a kind of mystical writings or speculations, uh, speculative ph- philosophizing of physicists about the nature of reality. As he says, they're not true mystics, in the sense that they are not themselves. Partici- yeah, they are not actually practitioners of that point of view which they are speculating about. They are left-brained thinkers about possible uh, parallels between. But they, therefore, they're still yeah. residing in the whole left-brained thinking disposition, thinking, you know, talking school. Sort of the, new, the new rationalism, yeah. trying to make real. Right. And in a sense, see, it's like, okay, creation myths is basically talking about the death of a certain kind of mythology and therefore of a traditional religion. One alternative is the attempt to prove the existence of God. The other attempt is, as science in a certain way, is the alternative to religion. It is the new mythology. It is the new attempt to describe the way how things came into being. If you look at mythology, if you assume mythology is an attempt to explain how the world was created and what makes it work, and give it a sense that gives you awe and wonder and a response, therefore, a divine, to a divine creator, see, science is, in a certain way, you could say, a new mythology. They're saying, no, it wasn't Adam and Eve, okay, it was so Big Bang. Creation myth is about true religion and the impulse to it. The Adler book is about thinking, you know, the thinking alternative and what the true with the true process in terms of the contemplation of existence through, through the contemplation of real questions. Uh, the essay about uh, Wilbur's book is again an address to, well, maybe there is a leading edge of science that seems to point to a greater contemplation of existence. 
But as he says, see again, this is it's, it's wonderful too. It, uh, all the way through, you'll notice in this book, he, um, he uh, the Levinanda's exercise of tolerance in this book is, yeah. is made very obvious. Um, because he says at the end of the essay on page 13, he says, therefore, not only quantum questions, but also the Tao of Physics and the Dancing Wooly Masters, along with a few other books that, are, that speculate in a similar manner, are included in this essential gathering in order to provide an inclusive assortment of useful commentaries on the varieties of thinking and peace of mind that may precede and even provide a kind of doorway to true religious and thus spiritual understanding, practice, and realization. See? So, in these, in these opening three essays, he's, still, he's, he's, he's working with all these concepts about what is true religion. What is, how is it anciently understood? How is it anciently communicated? How is it undermined and no longer seems to be available to us in, in modern times? And yet, he's, and, you know, he's, but, he's, but he's pointing then to the consideration of great questions, basically. And he's saying that Wilbur and these people on the kind of leading edge of science are all a preliminary to this matter of true religion. Because at the root of all true spiritual practice is this matter of of, of true religion, of true response, of true contemplation. Because, because basically what happens, tends to happen with exoteric or conventional religion is people tend to make that the end. That becomes it. But, it, therefore, from an esoteric point of view or from an understanding of what the true process of realization is, there must be a criticism of the third stage or the exoteric point of view in order to call one beyond to the greater participation in reality. Right, mm -hmm. But then again, his restoration of satsang to the very beginning. Ishtaguru Bhakti Yoga must be established from the beginning. So that, as he said, the beginnings of the real process are real participation. Therefore, real religion, real response, real impulse to realization, and real understanding of what that requires, which is to say, is this matter of satsang. So, in a way, all these, see, all these opening essays are talking about this whole domain of the first three stages of life and a coming to an understanding of what existence really is about, the purpose of existence. And then, see, he goes on to the essay about Shankara. And he says, he takes, and it's about the base propositions, which is about body, mind, and the transcendental point of view, or the point of view of consciousness itself. And, all, and what he's describing in there is the disposition then of the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth and seventh stages of life. So in this first little section, basically four essays about, uh, four essays in the section about introduction to religious philosophy, he takes you from the basic, the most fundamental considerations that begin the process as true religion to then a, a very summary description in the final essay in this section in which he talks about the four, about, about the, 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 the last four stages of life. And, uh, and a summary description of the, of the foundation of each one of those stages of life. 